New hood day. Well, new to me anyway. So if you watched the last On the Hunt episode, you'll know that I snuck off to Saskatchewan and picked this beauty up. She's obviously not brand new, but it's all original. Uh, it's definitely a survivor hood. It doesn't have that goofy cold air cutouts. The high cutouts got the proper lower ones for the single snorkel, which is gonna look great. It's got the original steel fenders, which they're a little dinged up. I mean, it is a survivor, a couple little dents, but nothing that can't be fixed in a body shop. Overall, I'm really excited about this hood because this was kind of the missing piece before I could actually send my truck off to paint because the old hood was just so trashed. Um, you'll notice that there's no headlights on this and I do have the, the black ones on Old Blue sitting out there, but I've got a special treat. I know a lot of people weren't too crazy about the, the double J brackets that I had on there and it just so happens that these came up on Kijiji. Original 359 headlights with the square mounts. How about that? So I think that's gonna look just absolutely awesome on there. And they'll bolt right up. The guy that sold me the hood, uh, as I mentioned in the last On The Hunt episode, he's building an extended hood, so he wanted to keep them. But look how sharp that's gonna look. All original just how it should be. I'm probably gonna take these uh, rock guards off as well. I really like that in behind. I think they're just a little too much with the, uh, the polished mirrors. Again, the mirror buckets and the mounts need to be polished as do the, uh, the surrounds. But I think for now, we're just gonna focus on getting it on the truck and getting it, uh, getting it wired up. And like I say, this is the final piece of the puzzle before I can send old blue off for paint. Now, I was contemplating taking it all apart and getting new panels, but you know, for the price that I got this hood for, and it's in just such good shape, I think this is gonna be a worthwhile effort. You'll also notice that I've got chain falls hanging from the roof to actually remove this thing off the trailer. And you're probably wondering, thinking, well, wait a minute, didn't, he, didn't twin sticks have a forklift? And you're right, I did. But I've kind of been liquidating some uh, some of the stuff I don't use that much. I've been selling some parts, etc., to try and put some money in the in the old project fund. And I basically spent it all on this hood and these headlights. But I think it's going to be worth it. Lost all the liquor money, boys. What? That's the way she goes. That's the way she goes. That's right. That's the way she goes. That's what I said. So That's you lost stuff. all our drink money, is what? She goes, she's gone. That's right. So I know the purists are gonna get mad at me because I took the Peterbilt bird off. Because my signature is the duck and that was a gift. So it's gotta go back on, on the new hood. I don't care, I think it looks cool. But we'll leave everything else. I did take off the side shields though. And I'll probably take off the, the stainless around the Peterbilt logos. And I've got better Peterbilt logos than this. So I'll take that off. It's just, it's so much easier. Oh, I took these guys off as well. It's so much easier to get at this when the hood's off the truck. So I'll just keep picking away at here. And because uh, once it's on there and it's tipped forward, you just can't reach this stuff. So ah, a little bit of rust behind those. So I think I'm gonna pull this thing back out. There's just, uh, there's a lot of dirt on it. So I'm gonna pull this back out and I'm gonna hit it with the car washer. We'll try and get it as clean as we can before we, uh, we take it off the trailer and get it ready to put on the truck. So I've just been using some soap and water and uh, this was really rusty behind here. So I've been using some 320 grit paper and I've just kind of been sanding off the rust. And I've noticed that this is really working for the uh, getting rid of all those mold spots as well. 
obviously we're gonna repaint this blue just like the sleeper. But if it looks nice until I can afford to paint it, that's not such a bad thing. Okay. Take a look at that. Look how nice that turned out. That's sweet. <laughs> All right. Let's get this. Let's get this hood back into the garage and and onto the ground. So what I need to do now is take off all the good stuff off of this hood. So I'm just going to take the mud flaps off and take the headlights, uh, leave the wiring of course because we'll just put this loom on the new, uh, on the new hood, uh, disconnect the springs and then I'll put all four hooks on. <laughs> you see I added a fourth chain fault. Uh, when I tried to lift off the trailer I tried it, I was lazy, I tried to lift it with three, that's why I got all crooked. So, I've got four, so I put one in each corner, and that way I can control it a little better when I put the new one on and line it up just perfectly. So we'll hook all the four corners on, and then we'll, uh, we'll lift it up a little bit, and then I'll release the brackets, and then we should be able to pull it up, back the truck out, set on the trailer, and then, like I say, do the reverse and put the white hood on. Now, hopefully it's that simple. I guess we'll see. Wow, that was a hell of a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So it's a simple one bolt, just a three quarter inch bolt. Kudos to the engineers that designed that. You just pop that guy out and that just holds it in the, uh, the bracket there. And you do it on both sides and you got a hood off. Huh. It's funny, sometimes you think jobs are going to be hard and they end up turning out super easy. The only challenge I had on this side was this guy got bent up along the way. If you watch these videos for a while, you probably noticed it. And it had caught the hood because it wouldn't allow this to go up. So I had to lift it up, try and bend that out a little bit and then pop it over. So what I think I'm gonna do is I gotta try and get that out of there because I don't wanna damage the, uh, the new hood trying to do the reverse of that and put it back in. But that's cool. Came off of there super easy, right on. That's kind of interesting. You'll notice, well, it's upside down, but it's one, one, two, one, three, seven. 
that's the uh, serial number of my Pete. It was, uh, it predated Vins. I think Vins came along in the early 80s, 80, 81. So uh, the, there's a number stamped on the brace of the other hood there. So that must be the serial number of the truck that came off of. So I'll have to look that up and figure out what year that was. But yeah, now I got a, a hood for sale. If anyone's interested, let me know. Looks kind of like a rat rod without the hood. <laughs> anyway, I was going to show you the serial number, 205298. So that's the serial number of the truck that this hood came off of. So if anyone out there works at Peterbilt and can look that up for me, let me know. I'd be curious what this uh, hood came off of, what year. The other challenge is with this old, um, these old truck parts is they're never exact swaps. And in this case, instead of the round circle that would receive a, a different mount in the center, this is a square, a square deal. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of work. But the guy that sold me the hood was a pretty minty dude and he traded me these, these boxes and this mount for a box of beer. And I'll show you where this goes. Okay, so as I said, instead of this guy, we're gonna have to swap it for this square mount. And it's the center support for the hood. Now I'm lucky, I was worried they were gonna be huck bolts, but they're actual uh, regular. Bolt. So hopefully I can, uh, I don't know if there's an insert there that I can, um, that'll, that'll hold those and I can just zip these out. Worst case, I'll just have to tip the hood forward and put a wrench on the back there. But I think that's going to be a pretty easy swap. They look to be exact. But the more challenging deal is going to be the boxes. So the ones I had on here, they received these cups that were on the, the blue hood. And obviously that's not going to work for what's on this one because this hood has spikes. Now these spikes are pretty common. You'll see them on a lot of Pete 359s. Actually mine's more of a rare deal, but I like this better because it's gonna hold it much more solid. But you see the, how this works. So these mount on the firewall there, and then the, the hood will come down and land in both of those and hold it nice and solid left and right. But the challenge is gonna be mounting these guys because unlike the center section, these brackets are hucked on. Now I was hoping I could just unbolt this and swap it, but this is a one piece deal. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take this off, zip the hucks off of there, and then hopefully just bolt the, bolt the new bracket on there. But it shouldn't be too, too bad. And once I get these, the two side buckets and then that center deal on there, we should be able to mount the hood and land it in there. Fingers crossed. So I will get this truck completed one way or another. I promise. Unlike some people that, uh, that start products and never finish them. And no, I don't mean Bruce Wilson. I uh, actually feel bad for Bruce. If you haven't heard, he's, he actually got arrested on a uh, probation violation because he, he was on probation, I guess, and then he left the state, which I guess is a big deal. I don't know, seems kind of silly to me that he'd actually be in the clink over something like that. So hopefully he can uh, he can get out soon and get back to working on trucks. I like Raz and him, but I have to say, at least Bruce was trying to save the old iron, and you know he was entertaining. So hope you're doing all right, Bruce. One ugga dugger or two? There we go. I think that's gonna work just nice. So the three holes, these two bottom ones and this top one, appear to line up. Yeah, almost perfect. So that must be the spot for these, these boxes. So I think I'll just throw a bolt in there. Ezra, I could sure use your huck gun again. <laughs> but yeah, I'll just throw a bolt in there and we'll just use like a nylock washer or a nut on there to keep it from backing out. But that's got to be the spot. Those holes wouldn't line up otherwise. I'm pretty sure that's right. We'll find out when we put the hood on and tip it back down. Now, quite a while ago, I picked up 
some bushings for the uh, for the old hood just because I assumed that the bushings were probably shot. So I just bought these off of uh, Amazon. They weren't too much. And I figure now is a, a perfect opportunity to replace these since it's hanging here and pretty easy to get at. So this is just a polyurethane bushing kit. So I am assuming I just, I'll get all this wiring out of here. Well, hmm. I do need the wiring for this guy. So maybe I'll leave that. I'll figure that out. But anyway, what I need to do is I think just take this, this outer, uh, loosen this bolt off and it'll release it. Take the, the pin out and then I can put that new bushing in there and push the, uh, the sleeve back in. So that shouldn't be too, too bad. We'll give it a, we'll give it a go here. So what do you think? Was it a good idea to replace the bushing? piece. It didn't look too too bad but we're gonna replace it anyway since it's out of there. Oh look at that it's gonna be a tight stupid tight fit. Actually it's too big it's supposed to be for a 359 but that's not the same size. Uh, nothing ever fits right and I have to trim it down just a touch. Just zip a little off the end. <laughs> That's not gonna fit. Oh, always something. Always something. Okay, we're getting close now to seeing how this thing fits. That was a little bit of wiggling around, but I'm glad I had the individual chain falls. I had to just keep adjusting until I got it just right till those bolts fit in there. Oh, I really want to do that again. I'm going to swap the hood on the Kenworth still. Something like that. So I'll just put the clips on and the cable to hold it. Where is that guy? Down there. And then I can uh, let go of all the chain falls. All right, here we go. It's officially part of the truck. Now we get our first try to see if it fits. Spikes are holding it up, although that line looks good. Actually, uh, perfect. I reached up there and I noticed there was still about an inch of space on the spike. So I thought maybe the block was holding it, but it was just such a tight fit between the uh, the spikes and the block. When I just put my foot on the 
on the thing and pressed it down into place. She went square. Beautiful. Fits like a brand new hood on a 389. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. So I just threw the headlights on there. They're obviously not wired, but to give you an idea of how it's gonna look, I got, still gotta get them polished up. But it's looking pretty sharp. This truck's like the coat of many colors. We got a white hood now, a patina cab, a uh, primered roof cap, and a painted sleeper. <laughs> awesome, little by little. Well, I figured I'd take her for a little snort after all that hard work and how how well that, that hood fits, man. She's tight as a glove. Just so happy with that. Beautiful fall day. Beautiful white hood. What more could a guy ask for? Tire off and kick back some cold ones, huh? 